Frederick Weissman is one of the country's foremost collectors of art. He amassed a personal fortune estimated at over $100 million as owner of one of America's largest independent distributorships of Toyotas. His three collections of more than a thousand works of art is estimated to have a value of $60 million. Fred was kind enough to invite us to his Holmby Hills mansion to talk about his background, his art, and his many philanthropic endeavors. I was born in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, I think when I was uh, about six or seven years of age, my mother would um, uh, take us to California. It was very cold in the winter and very hot in the summer in Minnesota. By the time he was nine, his mother moved the boys here permanently. After graduating from high school in 1929, he got a full-time job at MGM. From there, he went into the produce business, where he met Meyer Simon, owner of a canned foods company named Velveeta. He married Simon's daughter, Marcia, and went to work for Velveeta. At age 31, he became president of the company, which by then was known as Hunt Foods. Twenty years later, I resigned as president of the company and thought that I'd worked hard all my life and I would enjoy uh, the pleasure of retiring and doing things that I wanted to do, like uh, become more involved in my art that I was always interested in. But uh, that only lasted about six months, and I was very boring. What wasn't boring was the opportunity to take on another company. In 1970, Toyota Motors came from Japan looking for American entrepreneurs. They found Fred Weissman and gave him their distributorship for the mid-Atlantic states. I was very fortunate. It worked out very well with my franchise, and I had it for 20 years, and just this last October, uh, Toyota uh, purchased it back for me. Weissman presented Toyota with a much expanded business. In 1990, his franchise did $1.2 billion in sales, accounting for 9% of all Toyotas sold in the U.S. Fred assures us that this time he's retired for good. He's pursuing his art activities full time. We asked how his interest got started. Ever since I was a little kid, I, I would find a, a colorful calendar or a poster or something like that, and I would tack it up and use it. But I wasn't until about um, 45 years ago that I started buying uh, contemporary art. And I started buying French art. Then I. I saw a Franz Klein, and that really turned me on, so I became very involved in the New York School. Rothko, Barney Newman, Jackson Pollock, Gorky, artists of that nature. And, um, well, all I can say is that um, I'm really hooked. He owns approximately 2,000 pieces of art, divided into three collections. A corporate collection, housed in his offices, a personal collection located in his homes, and a third for his foundation. The Weissman Foundation was established in 1982 to expose contemporary art to the world. Art is a wonderful way of communicating because you had, do not have language barriers, uh, political barriers, and things like that. So we have, through our foundation, uh, been very active in American art in American embassies around the world. And um, uh, being able to walk into an American embassy and see American art, uh, it just, uh, it, it's just, it's a wonderful feeling. Weissman donated $5 million to the American Center in Paris and $3 million to the University of Minnesota for the construction of a museum. So that students, as they're learning, uh, and following their um, education will also be exposed to art. Exposure to me is very important. It helped me a great deal. And when artists every day are passing works of art, it helps, it opens up their, it broadens their vision besides just being, oh, what should I say, uh, besides being a bookworm. The foundation also gives works of art and cash grants to museums throughout the world. Most recently, 
33 works by California artists were donated to the San Diego Museum of Art. The collection ended up in San Diego as opposed to Los Angeles because that museum was willing to keep all the pieces together and on permanent display. They have the right to sell any of the art that we give them as long as they replace it with California art. In other words, art grows like life. It's, uh, we don't want, we don't want uh, to um, be recognized as being, well, this used to be belong to a collector by the name of Mr. Wiseman and so forth and so on. That's not the important thing. The important thing is what is happening in California. Does he have a plan for buying art? Is there a focus to his collection? I'm not like a museum would be that uh, I need more depth with, with this particular artist. Or uh, I have some media of that particular artist, but I don't have other things that he does. I don't do things that no, way. I never wake up in the morning and say, I'm going, uh, going art shopping or anything like that. I don't, do, I don't do things like that. I just, if I see something that really turns me on, I, I, I buy it. Besides his interest in art and art-related philanthropy, Fred is a new supporter of the Venice Family Clinic and a longtime donor to the Devereaux Foundation for the Mentally Retarded. I have two children, a boy and girl, who have been at Devereaux, uh, one in the East and one in the West, for a number of years. And um, I know how much I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to to finance it and so forth, but what it would be to not to be able to do that. He has another son, Richard, who has given him two grandchildren. Fred Weisman plans to leave his corporate and foundation collections just as they are. And for his personal collection... I'm a great admirer of the Frick uh, in New York City. The Frick Museum uh, is an environment that was the same environment that was there when the Fricks were living in the home. You see family pictures and you see things in there that has a wonderful feeling. That's the kind of dream that I'm going to have, that I want my collection in my home to um, be kept that way.